So first things first, Wallace, how are you? I'm doing pretty good, thank you. Good to hear. So we're talking about uh, Nightwish Decades uh, yep. today. So what I want to start with is July 6th, 1969. That was... Uh, 1996. Sorry, <laughs> 1996, <laughs> obviously. Um, but do you remember what the dream was at that point? Because that, that was kind of uh, the day you thought, okay, I'm going to make a new band. Yeah, um, not really a dream. Uh, what I do these days, it, it's not a dream come true. That's a pretty common misunderstanding that people, <laughs> they come to me and say that you have this night wish now and you have been around for 20 years, achieved a lot, you must be living your dream. But it, it's not, not like that. Uh, I had completely different plans for my life when I was a kid, when I was a teenager. Even at the age of 18, I still wanted to be an uh, academically trained scientist. Right biologist, something like this. And uh, during that day in July 1996, I was just hanging out with my buddies. Um, we had a couple of like small scale metal bands at the time and I wanted to do something on my own. I felt like I wanted to try my wings uh, with songwriting. So okay, I, I'll put together this project ba band do a demo or two and see what happens, mm -hmm. nothing serious. So we had absolutely no expectations okay. of any kind at that time. So how long did it take you to realize that this project, what, what was to become Nightwish, was different than all the other bands you played in? Uh, it might have been after the release of the debut album, Pinsels Fall First. Back in the days I was studying environmental sciences in a university in eastern Finland and the album came out it had some attention and I started to feel this itch like mm. this is pretty cool and I really enjoyed doing the songs and we even had a few shows in Finland and that worked out okay-ish <laughs> so I kind of saw that there is potential well maybe not potential but I felt really intrigued and drawn to that world right. of metal and songwriting and touring. So it was in, uh, in the spring of 1998 that I quit my studies completely and moved back home to my mom and dad and decided to give this project called Nightwish a few more years. Hmm. And very quickly, is, is there some part of you that still wants to be a scientist? Because obviously uh, Endless Forms most beautiful, heavily inspired by natural sciences. I'm very, very intrigued by the field of science, natural sciences, and mm -hmm. I do read the articles and I follow the scene and it still interests me. But um, I don't think, even if given the opportunity, I would never go back <laughs> to the school and start studying. That's, that's long gone. Fair enough. Yeah. So, um, musically then, because you said you wanted to try your hand at songwriting. You wanted something, something uh, of your of your own. So, so what what were you looking for that you couldn't find in in, in other bands that you played in, and, and maybe music that you heard? The actual aspect of songwriting in these other bands that I was playing back at the time when I was in high school and after high school, I was more or less a session keyboard player. There were bands like Natwind and Skrot. Dark Woods might be thrown the furthest shore. And I enjoyed doing that stuff, but I was just the guy who played the keyboard on top of already recorded stuff. And I just felt really strongly drawn towards the songwriting process. Mm -hmm. And then when I had the chance to try it with Nightwish, with the first demo, I was completely hooked. I realized that this is the thing that I want to do. This is my forte. And uh, this is something that I want to evolve in myself. And 22 years later, here we are. So for you then, was every album that you made, could you see that evolution? Very easily. Um, funny you should mention, a few months ago when we were asked to come up with the songs for this mm -hmm. upcoming Decades compilation, I had to go through the whole back catalogue of Nightwish. So actually for the first time ever, I listened through the, all the albums we ever made. 
in chronological order, starting from Angels Fall First. And that was quite the experience. Mm. In a way, it was the ultimate nostalgia trip. Uh, but it was also like, wow, what were we thinking back in the days? And that has nothing to do with shame or being ashamed of what we have done 20 years ago. But it was just a re revelation to me that, uh, wow, this band has really grown. Mm -hmm. I mean, the essence is still there when you listen to songs like Elven Path or Beauty and the Beast. It's immediately Nightwish, mm -hmm. as is the songs on Endless Forms. But so much has changed. I would never dream of writing lyrics like The Carpenter again. But right. back in the days, it was the real thing. Mm -hmm. It was what we all wanted to do. It was uh, what I wanted to emotionally express. Right. And I remember that kid. I still can. And in certain ways, I miss it. Because it was so innocent. It was so new. Everything was a novelty. So in that sense, I do miss certain aspects of it. But uh, I'm just really happy to be here sure. <laughs> now. But like you say, the, the, I, I can imagine it is quite a nostalgia trip when you when you go through your, everything that you've done. So were there specific moments that stuck out for you, and not necessarily even songs, but kind of things that you reminded you of, of certain moments or certain kind of directions or, or decisions you made? I was a bit positively surprised of how well the albums have survived time. Uh, Angels Fall First clearly sounds like a demo that it was, but for example Oceanborn, it, it really has a strong atmosphere in it, mm -hmm. still after almost 20 years. So that was something that I was quite intrigued by, then. wow, these really work, still. Mm -hmm. And in terms of uh, what you just mentioned, they feel like snapshots in a way that you, you can rem uh, remember the person that you were back then. And kind of. so, so do you remember on Oceanborn what kind of the, your motivation was back then? Or? They do bring back those times like just before the debut album, it was all about these atmospheric gothic metal bands preferably with a female singer. Mm. Theatre of Tragedy, The Gathering, uh, The Third of the Mortal, to mention a few. And that influence can so easily be heard on the first album. Then we found <laughs> the wonders of power metal, Stratovarius, Gamma Ray, Halloween. Okay, then comes Oceanborn. So it's all very reflective. At some point, I got totally lost in the world of film music, mm. thus became Century Child once and we've been on, on that film music metal path ever since. So every album is a reflection of its own time. Uh, evolution is a really good term to describe it. I feel pride over the fact that we have always been, at least I personally think that we have been able to take the music to a different level without ever losing the originality of what this band is about. But never repeat ourselves by doing the same album twice. There's always something new on each album. And you mentioned those those film scores and the influence of them. So, and I, I feel this is kind of a, a turning point for you as a songwriter. So, so what what was it about soundtracks, about kind of the theatrics, or in a way, or, uh, I don't know if theatrics is the right word, but kind of the. the I guess it's the 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 idea of uh, combining visuals with audio, that's mm. always intrigued me. Uh, whenever I write songs, I visualize the story that I want to tell very strongly. And for example, I might use some visual aids. When I, whenever I'm playing, I have some art or some uh, books in front of me, mm. just so I get the visual thing as well. It helps me create. So I guess that's one thing. And the other thing is that film music often is quite grandiose, mm. big, and uh, I'm just a sucker for grand music. So it's the epicness kind <laughs> the of Epicness, music. yes, yeah. that's it. So yeah. if, if you continue throughout, uh, throughout the albums, then am I, is it fair to say that on Dark Passions Play, especially around that time, was, was the most difficult for the band? Yeah, I think it's by far our darkest album. Mm. There are some lighter moments like Amaranth or mm. Last of the Wilds there, but overall it's pretty dark. Again, a reflection of 
what happened in 2005, 2006. Right, and in, in that sense then, does, does writing about it, creating these, these uh, epic songs, does that help deal with, with kind of, the, are those the emotions kind of, uh, let me put it differently, is, is it... Oh, just, I know what you mean. In it's terms of, is it a cathartic thing in a, in a way? Catharsis is a good, good way of putting it. Uh, the ultimate example being the poet and the pendulum, mm. the song, where I literally kill myself in the song so that I wouldn't have to do it in real life. <laughs> and it was a very cathartic thing to do. And back in the days, it just had to be done, ended up being a wonderful piece of music. And we still perform it live every now and then. Mm. And it's a bit tricky because right. that's 12 years ago. I'm not that person anymore. I, I'm past all that, but it's still there, immortalized in that one song. Right. And to play that live, it's very, uh, it's quite a paradox. Um, does it remind there's quite you? a turmoil inside of my head when we play it. Right, does it remind you of it kind does. of It does, it really does, yeah. I remember sometimes telling the monitor engineer to please cut off all vocals from my in-ears okay. just for the duration of that song so I don't hear the lyrics. Right.